So I can't believe that I've gone this long with the Rooney here from Boom Studios without bringing up pro wrestling and more specifically WWE. Yes. Jack and I, one of our side bars that we always talk about that's not on the YouTube channel as we always talk WWE and wrestling in general. We're both huge fans and recently I've picked up a bunch of 9-8 copies of Boom's WWE comics and the 1 in 100 uh, Randy Savage variant, the uh, 1 in 50 Fraser Irving Undertaker variant. I got the New Day variant. So I'm gradually picking up 9-8s and all those great WWE titles. There's some I'm still missing, but love, love Boom's WWE books, especially the Raza covers. But yeah. the covers in general are great. So can you kind of tell us a little bit how the partnership came about and how it's worked for you guys with WWE? I am a diehard, lifelong WWE fan, as you can tell, because I'm seeing her like a doofus with this belt. Um, but, uh, you know, I, again, the WWE deal predated me joining the company, but honestly it was, there are folks at, at boom who love wrestling who said, Hey, I think we can do a really awesome wrestling comic. And you know, Eric Harbour and editor Jasmine Amiri, who then has since gone to Lion Forge, editor, Chris Rosa, um, all wrestling fans and felt like there could be some really cool stories to tell in kayfabe, you know, within the world of wrestling that took it a bit uh, more seriously. Like I enjoyed the paper cuts um, crime series they did. You know, I enjoy that stuff, but I think what we've looked and said is uh, we looked at this and Ross said, hey, I may not be the biggest wrestling fan, but I got people at this company who are passionate about wrestling. They believe they can tell a good story. And like I said before, the best stories come from genuine passion. So um, Boom and WWE struck a deal and we've been so pleased with what we've been able to do with them, telling a lot of really awesome stories. Um, one of the big joys has been, uh, for me personally, has been uh, being able to write promos that uh, the talent then record. So I've written, uh, we've done some promo videos with um, Becky Lynch, with the Undisputed Era, with uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, with uh, Andrade and Zelina Vega. And I got to tell you guys, it is such a thrill to hear these wrestlers say the words you wrote for them. Um, and yeah, they may be contractually obligated to do it, but it doesn't take away from the coolness. Um, if you have a chance and you search the, uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn video we did, they did to promote their arc, the Sammy and Kevin show or Kevin and Sammy show that's now available in collection, a soft cover collection. Um, it's, it's a hilarious promo of those two. And then, you know, uh, I threw up the undisputed era sign at the beginning, beginning of this video and uh, this interview and like, I'm a giant undisputed era fan. So having uh, Adam Cole say words I wrote for him uh, is just super cool to me. And so, um, you know, that's been, uh, it's been really fun to work with everybody there. Uh, the wrestlers all love the comics. Um, uh, Seth Rollins and Joshi G, who's a CrossFit trainer, um, who I know from an event I went down to here in Venice, uh, we supplied them with some comics for a recent CrossFit event. They had WrestleMania weekend. And like, it's really cool to see the wrestlers like really, um, all buying into the like all buying into these comics and being excited and promoting them naturally. So it's been a really cool partnership. You know, there are monthly series recently ended and, but we do have more WWE projects to come. Uh, we are excited to continue our work with WWE. And I think right around uh, San Diego comic-con expect some really fun announcements about new projects between boom studios and WWE. So that's, that's big news. That's another, again, another Bolo here talking about be on the lookout for those uh, WWE Boom Studios announcements around San Diego Comic Con time because I know myself, I, I'm definitely disappointed to see the ongoing series and looking forward to some more WWE content from Boom. But uh, one of the questions I had for you was um, talking about kind of like the women's evolution storyline. Obviously, yeah. we at CBSI, we're a secondary market kind of based organization and um we, i was kind of wondering we talked about this actually a little bit before we went on the air the sales of like the alexa bliss variant the women's evolution storyline was a big hit the variant covers uh took off and did really well in the secondary market um i was really wondering was does boom track those type of things do you guys pay attention to what those things are selling does it factor into your creative decisions and uh when can we get the man becky lynch and the champ champ on a variant cover well, uh, actually, it's funny you say that. I, I know we've done uh, some Becky Lynch covers, but I know you want we want the new version of Becky Lynch with some variants. Uh, look, again, I'd be lying if I told you guys we didn't pay attention to this. When I'm telling you that Ross, Bryce, and I are data scraping all the time and looking for good deals, like, of course we know what's hot. But I think the challenge is 
we have to make good comics with the best covers and the best cover variant cover program that makes sense for fans and retailers. And what we try to do is find the intersection of serving that group best and also making covers that speculators and collectors want because like we're all collectors here on some level of something. Like I look, I have like, I have hockey cards at my desk. Like I collect hockey cards too. I'm a big Montreal Canadiens fan. Like we're all collectors. I'll show you what I just bought off eBay. I just bought the reign of Superman pogs off eBay because I wanted an unpopped sheet. Like this is this is how much we all collect things here. So um, Bryce and I have been both on a trading card collection kicks. He's been collecting all the old Marvel series from Intel. Um, so like, but when we look at these covers, we're always saying, what's a cool thing we could put on cover that people want to buy? Like, I think that's a very basic thing we have to do, which is um, we got to make covers that people want, but we also want to make sure that our editorial team has the freedom to create the covers they think are viable with the artists they think are cool. Like no one tells them you need to use Raza. You know, Chris Rosa who edits those books right now, he loves Raza's art style. He knows Raza is uh, popular. He puts them on covers, you know, like there is that separation of church and state, we, which I think is really healthy. But yeah, we um, like, I think another one that was a sneaky hot book was the Ronda Rousey variant cover to WWE uh, number 25. Uh, that cover um, I saw get a bit of heat uh, right after it released because it was the first uh, solo uh, Ronda Rousey cover we had done. Uh, she also appears um, on some other variant covers, notably one of the variant, the Kendall Good variant cover to WWE Forever number one. You'll see her as one of the many characters on that cover too. Um, but you know, the women's evolution, look, we, we know that uh, there are certain wrestlers, a certain talent who have great appeal. Alexa Bliss, definitely one of them. Um, she's very talented. And so we're always working to um, to make sure that we have a variety of cover spotlighting the hottest um, talents. And I would not be shocked to see a Becky Two Belts Champ Champ variant um, in the future on an, on an upcoming issue where it makes sense. Uh, certainly, we all know how popular Becky is. We know how popular the New Day is. Um, yes. You know, and you can see part of how the, the the structure of the WWE ongoing series changed. Right, we had that first year about the Shield. But then we did these smaller arcs so we could highlight those other hot characters. We did the NXT limited series so you could highlight those characters. So that was actually um, my favorite part. Yeah, that's really is really cool. And you know, Chris Rosa is a dyed in the wool wrestling. He's a dyed in the wool combat sports fan. So like you couldn't ask for a better editor on these books. And Chris is always trying to find the cool new stories to tell. Um, and you know, so that whether it be like uh, these specials like WWE Forever number one. Oh, wait, whose name is on that book? Oh, that's <laughs> me. Um, but, you know, there's uh, there's uh, wh whatever the stories are, he's always trying to spotlight the big t old talent, the talents of yesterday with the talents of today and the talents of the future. So while we don't have a monthly WWE series, trust me, we are focusing on get delivering really awesome projects like the Undertaker uh, original graphic novel next year. We, we've been, you know, we've experimented with different formats. We've experimented with different story lengths. So expect some new cool stuff in the future. But if, look, last year, if you were at San Diego, uh, you got to meet uh, you got to meet WWE talent at our booth. The year before, every year, you've got to meet The New Day or Becky Lynch or Charlotte Flair or Ric Flair at our booth. So if you're a WWE fan, it's pretty safe to say you want to come by our booth at San Diego because you're probably going to meet one of the top talents in WWE. That's, uh, that, that's awesome. And – all right, I got to go back. You, uh, you, you flash the, uh, the WWE forever here, and it, it, it's not just a great cover. I mean, this one's special to you for another reason. Uh, your, your name is on it, like you said. You, you have a story in this book. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, internal audit is, is the, the, the sub story in that book, and tell, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I uh, I am a man of many interests, and uh, one of the things I, I have passion for is writing, and I've uh, always wanted to write comics. And one of the great things work about Boom is they really nurture that creativity and give you opportunities. So um, the uh, the advantage I have being in the office here is that I know some folks here, and they know my interest in WWE. And so um, you know, in pitching Boom on a few different things, uh, they they uh, connected me with Chris. Obviously, who I know, but uh, you know, we keep again church and state separate. I don't talk about my writing ambitions in the office, and because uh, it's not fair to anybody else, because I'm the head of marketing. You got to talk to the head of marketing here. And I pitched to Chris the way that any writer would pitch to Chris. I said, "Here are my story concepts. 
Um, hope you want to, you know, buy one of them uh, or someone approves them for uh, for a WWE comic. And uh, to my surprise, it was the IRS story that he um, that he was really into. Uh, I'll tell you, to be honest with you, the IRS story. It's a story about how IRS and uh, Ted DiBiase form Money Incorporated. It's their secret origin. Um, it actually all was inspired by an episode of Justice League Action, with it written by Paul Dini, um, where Mongol kidnaps the Joker, thinking he's an actual like Joker to make his troops laugh. And I also thought it was just a really funny play. And so like the origin of the story was what if someone kidnapped IRS thinking he was an actual accountant or an actual tax guy. <laughs> and like, you know, he always seemed like that in the, uh, on, on television, but you never, um, you know, they never ever fully explained it. So uh, I wanted to tell a story about like how, in kayfabe about like IRS and what motivates him. And I wanted to tell a story where IRS was a hero of the story because going back and watching those promos, all he was asking anyone to do was pay their fair share of taxes. That's not a bad guy. Like, I mean, he was evil for all the cheating he did, but like, otherwise, like that's a pretty fair position to take. So uh, I was trying to find a way in eight pages to tell that story. Um, what I can tell you is that the story was really well received and it opened up uh, some other opportunities. So um, I can tell you this is not the last time you will see my name on the cover for WWE comic. Uh, more details to come, but uh, that was a great experience. I'm so thankful to Chris Rosa and to Editor-in-Chief Matt Gagnon for giving me the opportunity. Really thankful to everybody who covered the book. I'm honestly, it means the world to me. Like I feel like a dork talking about this to you guys, but I, it really means a lot that you brought it up and like you flashed a comic before we even did this interview. And like the fact that y'all took the time to do that means a lot to me because um, I, you know, I love comics. I love pro wrestling. And this is, uh, it, this means the world to me. The belt I actually have over my shoulder was um, a wedding gift from some friends at WWE for me and I wore it at my wedding. So uh, this is like, re yeah, wrestling is a big part of it. And uh, um, you know, this is uh, it's something I'm really glad to contribute to. So, you know, we love being able to tell, um, do these specials and tell stories about wrestlers you might not otherwise tell stories about my, uh, Two characters, the two uh, vin like old school wrestlers, I really would love to write about one day. Uh, the first is the Mountie, because I love the idea that he can't come to America and arrest people, but he has to make sure he fights them up in Canada to prosecute them. I think it's just funny. Um, like I don't know if you remember the show Do South from the '90s, but it makes me oh, think. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then uh, the Goon, because I like the idea that the Goon is like a hockey player, but also a wrestler. Uh, which is like, and I want to know like when he get like, I have a very specific story in mind for that, but I really, um, I would love to see what, like, how do you make the goon seem cool? Um, and how do you make the goon work in kayfabe? Uh, I love those characters. Like what the old school wrestlers could do is they had these really fun characters and there's so much room to like do different things. So I always appreciated, uh, I always appreciated them. For sure. Oh yeah. There's so much from, uh, the Brooklyn brawler to Waylon Mercy to uh, the Red Rooster. There's so much you can do. Yeah. Do a, a ride along with Big Boss Man and Hexall Jim Duggan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. That, that's the fun stuff. But, I mean, like, there's a, there's so many cool modern wrestlers, too, with fun characters like Bray Wyatt. Like, I know, like, I think I love the way Bra the Firefly Funhouse thing they have right now. It's so wacky. And there's a lot of cool stuff like that that I'm really glad uh, that we have um, – that wrestling has a diversity of characters. Like you can have someone serious, like the man or champ champ. And you can also have like someone ridiculous and fun. Like, uh, the, or the original, the original bro, uh, Matt Riddle. Like, I love that. Um, NXT is like my thing. So like Velveteen dream, that's like the perfect character for me. I love the dream. He's so good. Um, undisputed era is so much fun. Like that's the stuff that I, uh, you know, that I love about wrestling. You can do anything in it. If we if we can get a Velveteen Dream Purple Rain homage, I promise you that's a sellout. I promise you, Chris Rose is exactly the editor who would love to do because he him and I both love the Dream. He came in when I missed NXT. He's like, "Did you see the Dream Couch segment?" And I'm like, "I'm sure it's fine." And I watched it. Like, "Oh my god, you were right. This is amazing." <laughs> uh, you know, so uh, that is um, no, it's amazing. It's uh, rest pro wrestling is uh, the best, uh, warts and all. <laughs> 